yeah, rowing is actually a funny one. So um, I'd, I'd never rowed. I'd probably done every single water sport um, possible, um, yep. apart from rowing. And which okay. is, I, I grew up um, down south uh, on the Thames, which okay. is kind of the birthplace of rowing, you know, that's <laughs> where... Yeah, 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 um, absolutely. I live very close to Henley. Um, but yeah, I'd never rowed. Um, and I worked with a... A girl who I worked with had rode the Pacific a few years prior to when I went. Um, and I remember when I first met her, I was just sat chatting kind of about things we'd done and getting to know her a bit. And I remember she said to me, oh yeah, actually, um, next year I'm rowing the Pacific. I remember thinking, you are absolutely crazy. Like you're rowing yeah. the Pacific. Like what on earth is this? And then, and I think she said, oh, have you ever seen the documentary, you know, the James Cracknell Ben Fogel one, which a lot of people have seen yeah, yeah. when they rode the Atlantic. And I was like, oh yeah, that was like, that looked epic. And she said, yeah, we're doing that, but we're going from California to Australia. It's going to take us a year. And I just wow. remember thinking, that is madness. But because I knew her, I obviously followed their journey. And yeah. over that time I watched it, but I, I always remember thinking, oh my goodness, I would love to do something like that looks absolutely incredible. I would love to do something like that. But people like me don't do that kind of, Thing. And I don't, yeah, I don't know why yeah. I had that, but a lot of people, a lot of people I've spoken to since say that they have that they look at these people doing those kind of challenges and they think, oh, that's amazing. Like I wish I was one of those people that could do something mm -hmm. like that. And I think after having done the channel swims and the ultras, and I'd pushed myself kind of so far up my comfort zone. I think I was in that kind of headspace of, well, hang on, if they can do it, then why can't? Like why isn't that something that I can do? Um, yeah, and so there was. There's a race across the Atlantic. There's also a race across the Pacific, which is yeah. much less known. Um, far fewer crews. I think I think there's still been less than a hundred people who've rowed across the Pacific in total. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, so it's much less rowed ocean than the Atlantic, um, for good reason, probably. Actually, it's <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> probably not as enjoyable in terms of weather and um, sea state as the Atlantic, but. Yeah, I just, um, I had a bit of a bumpy road getting getting to the start line. Um, I initially joined a crew. Okay. Um, I had no rowing experience, which they were aware of. It then transpired kind of a little bit further down the line that actually their main goal was they wanted a team of really good rowers. Um, okay. I had never rowed. I joined my local rowing club to learn to row, which actually in the grand scheme of things, rowing on a flat, river is nothing like rowing on an ocean it doesn't yeah, really yeah, I can imagine. There, there isn't can imagine. there isn't really much um being a good flat water rower doesn't particularly make you a good ocean rower or prepare you yeah to row the ocean um yeah so i ended up um initially joining a crew we then kind of parted separate rays and i made my own crew um found a, two other girls that wanted to row um okay. I won't bore you with the story. It was a very stressful couple of months. Um, yeah. Our last crewmate actually joined. We lost a crewmate two months before the start line. And okay. then we found our third crewmate, L. She yeah. actually joined um, pretty much six weeks before we left. Um, okay. She was Australian. The first time we ever met her was when I picked her up from the airport in California. Um, oh, really? she'd wow. never seen the boat before like she hadn't been on the boat she literally flew out completely blind but just had the most amazing attitude and like, exactly the kind of person that you would want on a boat with you um yeah, yeah so the three yeah all three of us actually um l had rowed for a year at uni um and that okay. was it and meg who was out my other crewmate had never been in a boat at all um okay. yeah so we were really three complete rowing novices um which I think made it all a bit more exciting, to be honest. Yeah, just um, learn, learn. <laughs> yeah, exactly. How you got along? Yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah. yeah, it was yeah, it was the most incredible, incredible adventure. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, and when, because obviously I mentioned at the beginning, obviously you came was that from the mid Pacific row that you got the world that world record, or was that from? Yeah, so occasion. yeah, we got two world records. So we um, we were the first crew of three, male or female, to row the mid Pacific. Um, yeah. So previously there had been um, 
most people rode in a, they'd been fours and they'd been pairs, and no one yeah. had rode in a three. Also, probably for good reason, rowing as a three has it. Yeah. You have to have a bigger boat, but sometimes you have to row solo, and yeah. so there's um, kind of difficulties rowing as a three. Also, a lot of positives. Um, and then we were the youngest crew of three to row any ocean as well. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, so when when you uh, rowed it, was it a was it double or single or was it? Yeah. So the double? boat. So we rowed a boat that would normally be rowed by four people. Um, okay. So it's a bit bigger than a pairs boat um, for a number of reasons. When we first started out, we were going to row as a four. Um, yeah. We lost a crew member pretty early on in this kind of in our build up to the race, um, which actually wasn't very long because we did it all in about six months, um, okay. which was then when we just decided to go as a three. So the boat we had was a little bit bigger than we probably would have had if we'd maybe been going as a um, as a three. Um, yeah. But we rotated around. So we rode three hours on, three hours off, um, okay. kind of 24 hours a day. And in that three hours of rowing, you'd row for two hours as a pair, but then an hour by yourself. So in a 24 hour yeah. period, we'd have 12 hours where we were rowing in with two of us and then 12 yeah. hours where we'd be rowing individually. Wow. As a okay. team, yeah. That, that's, that's, that must have been pretty, like, cause he said, like you say, he didn't not really rowed before, if not at mm. all hardly, especially ocean rowing. Cause I know yeah. I have, I know it's different. Um, yeah. So how, I, I suppose, like, again, I, when I spoke to James about this, he said that he basically got fit. He just trained and he got fitter as he went along. Like yeah, he didn't I've, necessarily start with the, the, the training. He yeah. just got fitter as he went. Yeah, completely. I mean, we turned up to the start line. Um, I mean, actually, if you see photographs of us at the start line, we probably look the unfittest we've ever looked purely because we just, we put on about 10 kilos yeah. of fat. Um, yeah. On purpose. Um, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, it was a great. Most of us <laughs> ever had training for training for an adventure. You can just eat whatever you wanted. Um, yeah, purely yeah. because we'd spoken to a lot of crew members who all said, you know, you're going to lose so much weight because it's just it's so hard to eat enough calories out at sea. Um, yeah. Compared to what you're burning, and they were completely right. I mean, I I lost 17 kilos in two months. Wow. Yeah, that's and a I, lot. Yeah, and um, and I mean, I wasn't. I was never hungry. I wasn't ever thinking, oh, I'm not going to eat that because I want to lose weight or whatever. Yeah, it was yeah. just the amount of rowing that you do and um, kind of the physicality of it compared to, it's difficult to yeah. to eat a lot of food, to kind of force yourself to eat it because you row for three hours and then you'd come off your row shift and you'd have three hours off. Yeah. But actually by the time you got into the cabin, got out of your wet clothes, that's maybe... 10 minutes down then you have to start cooking so you then you have to boil your water wait for your food pack and then you've got to sleep as well so a lot of time especially kind of in the night you'd come off and all you want to do is sleep if it's kind of two in the morning and you yeah. know that you'd have about two and a half hours to sleep before you have to get back up and then row for another three hours so it was mm. yeah it was um kind of food intake was actually one of the most difficult parts of it of actually trying to make sure that every time you came off shift you at least grab something and got some calories down you um yeah yeah before you slept and then two and a half hours later your alarm would go off to get back out and start rowing again so yeah 